Again, welcome to Data Science course CS628. In this lecture, we're going to use the Python package named pandas and numpy to solve data science problem. So our first problem is to create a bar graph of the previous outcome variable with response overlay. So previous outcome will be a independent variable or it will be a variable. And our response is also a variable with only two outcome, either yes or no. So the first thing we need is a data set because we know a graph or a bar graph here will be a, a visual representation of data. So first thing we did, we want to use the read underscore CSV. And we know the read uh, underscore CSV is in the pandas package. So first thing we do, we import the pandas as PD. Then we read the, the CSV, which is the comma separated value uh, training data set using the pandas package. So it will be, again, the pandas package name now is PD as PD. So we are PD.read CSV. And this is the directory where our file is. Our file name is bank marketing training. So we read the file into a storage place or a variable name bank train. Now we are ready to use the file to create our bar graph using the function name cross tab. Also the cross tab is in the pandas package. So we start with the pd.cross tab. And uh, now our data set is in the bank train. So we have bank train and we are using the variable name previous outcome. Then comma, the same file again, bank train. Our second variable is the response. So this will allow us again to create a cross tab. A cross tab will be a, more or less a contingency table. And we store it in a cross tab underscore zero one. Now we are going to plot our bar graph. We use the function name plot. We are plotting the function using the cross tab underscore zero one data or the cross tab of the data. What type of graph we use the attribute can equal to bar. This will tell us we are creating again a bar graph we can specify any type of graph we want. Then also this bar graph will be stack. So stack equal to true. So when we run this code, this will be our output. Again, this our output depends on our file, our data set. So we have couple of yes, no's. Most of our data is no, blue is no, and orange is yes. So our response previous outcome, we have three categories. Again, this depends on the data set we have. Now let's see a second question. The second question says we should create a normalized bar graph of previous outcome variable. So we should have a previous outcome variable in our file with a response overlay again then we are going to describe the relationship between the previous outcome and response. So again, the first thing we do, we also import the pandas package as PD. Then we have the pd.read underscore CSV. This function will allow us to read our data into a storage or a variable name, the bank underscore train. Again, bank underscore train can be any name. Also, the PD can be any name, but read underscore CSV is a function that comes with the pandas package. It allows us to read, get a data input into a variable storage. So that's the first step. We read the CSV bank train data using the pandas package. Here, we need to specify the directory where our file is located. Then next, we are going to create a cross tab again. So our data is in the back train, bank train. We are using the variable name previous outcome. Our second variable is response bank underscore train. 
Then after that, we are going to create the cross tab. So after we create the cross tab finish, which again, we call it cross tab underscore zero one. We are going to create a cross tab of a data to plot the time and to plot the graph. But this time we are going to use div function. The div function allows us to sum within each row of the tab table. Because first of all, we create a contingency table. Then the sum function will allow us to, again, sum everything within each table. So here we have the cross tab underscore zero one. This is where we have our cross tab. Then period div in the function division. Then what we are doing, we are summing the row and also the axis we are assigning to zero. Then the next step, we normalize it. So plot the normalized cross table data. So we say cross, uh, sorry, cross tab. So cross tab underscore norm, that will be the name. As we create it, we'll do the division. That's the new name we have in the cross tab underscore norm. And this time is the same. We have a, a bar graph and also a stack. So again, the cross tab underscore norm dot plot. Plot is again a function that we can use to plot in a graph. The kind of graph we are plotting here is bar and is stack. But the reason why we have the cross tab underscore norm, when we create a cross tab, the next step, what we did is that we use the division function to sum each row. The result we get, we put it in a new variable named cross tab underscore norm. So we use the cross tab underscore norm to plot the graph. And this would be our output. Now we can see the two graphs, the differences. So the next is also to create an histogram of age with response overlay. So our predicted, uh, predicted uh, variable or our independent will be age and our response. So to create an histogram, we import the NumPy as NP. Then we also import the matplotlab.pyplot as PLT. So the next thing we're going to do is to create a subset for each element of the overlay. So again, we have, this is the previous data set we are using, the bank train. So we should already have the bank train with a data set in already. So here we have the bank train dot response, which is if it's equal to zero for age and also bank train, if it's equal to no and the age. And that will give us the two values here, BT, HY, BT, HN. Now with these two data, we can now plot the histogram using the H, IST function of the histogram function. This is histogram function. We take two variables, the bt underscore age underscore y and bt underscore age underscore n. Now the number of bins, which will be our number of categories for the histogram will be 10. And this histogram also will be stuck. Then next we include a legend. So our legend is what you see here now. Response is equal to yes. Response is equal to no, which means orange and blue. Then we also have the title. The title is here, histogram of age with response overlay. So the title again, histogram of age with response overlay. Then we need our S label, which will be a horizontal label. So we can use the function S label. The label will be age. We also have Y label it will be frequency. So we can see in the graph, we have frequency as vertical, which is the Y level, then H as the horizontal, which is the X level. Then we also need to include a show function. The show function will allow us to see, to show the graph. So we can see the S level, Y level and title is inside the package matplotlab.pyplot. So that's why we, 
when we want to use the show, we have plt.show. We want to use the Y label, we say plt.y label. We didn't say np.y label because Y label is in the package matplotlab.py plot. So that will be the conclusion for histogram. And the next week, also going to consider a capital loss. Here, we are going to learn how to identify the outliers in a capital loss using the z score method. So sometimes we can use a z score method to again identify the outline data. And the question here is how many outlines we have. So again, the first thing we need is our data. So we are using the read underscore CSV, which means we are assuming that we already import the pandas as PD, same as our previous example. So first import pandas as PD, then we can use pd.read underscore CSV. Then we include the directory or the location where our file is. We are going to read the file into a variable name adult underscore ch3 underscore train. So now, in order to use the z score, most of the statistics work, we can do it from the sign pi. So the first thing we're going to do is to import sign pi package. So we says from sign pi, we're going to import stats. So after we import the start package, we can compute the z score for the capital loss field and also store the values in a new capital loss z underscore z column. So we have a new variable or new column. So here we can see that we use the package, we name the package stats dot z score function to find the z score. So we are going to find the z score for the column capital loss. The capital loss data is in the, our file name adult underscore ch3 dot train. So we're just looking for one column of the data set, which is the capital loss find the z score. Then the next thing we're going to do is that the subset the data to outlines based on the values that have greater than three or less than, again, three. And here, education underscore Z values. So the condition here said, again, our data set is adult underscore CH3 underscore train. We are using the query function. So the query here said that if the capital loss Z is greater than three, or the capital loss Z is less than negative three. And that's the condition we have here. So next we are going to print the number of outliers in the capital loss field based on the condition we have here. So here we say print there are uh, adult CH3 train outlines dot shape zero. So the capital loss outlines in the adult train data. So again, we have the query here. The query function will give it as the result. So we can see adult underscore ch3 underscore train underscore outline. That's our new storage for the number of outlines. And that's what we have the adult underscore ch3 underscore train underscore outlines dot we use the shape function then we find the result that we get the result that gave us on the query so this very number eight line will give us again the outline and the result will be there are 679 capital loss outlines in the adult ch3 train data the output to be a there are whatever the result we get from here with a shape, then we print it. So next we're going to construct a contingency table for a capital loss flag results income. We are going to include the counts and column percentage. And also we should clearly describe the effect of having any capital losses on income. So first thing we do, contingency table, we need a cross-tab function. 
So we have to assume that we import the pandas since we know pandas have the cross tab function. So we say pd dot cross tab. Our file name is c adult underscore ch underscore training. Then the outline, and we say capital loss, capital again dash loss dash flag, comma then adult ch three train the income. Here we say the income, if it's less than or equal to 50K and greater than 50K for capital loss flag. And then again, we have our results here, one zero. Again, this result will be based on the uh, the data set we have, the content of our data set. So we can see the results here. And next we have the cross tab, zero one. Then we use the division function again. We sum everything in each row. And when we sum, this is, uh, we have this condition. And this is what we get. So here we say that individual with the capital loss, are almost evenly spread across income terms because individuals without a capital loss tend to be in the less than or equal to 50K bin. So that's our two categories in the income at a less than or equal to 50K or greater than 50K. So we have zero and one. Previously, we have zero section and the one section value. So that would be the conclusion. Again, these examples are related to week five assignment. And that's the main goal of this lecture. So we can look at it, how the program are solved, almost similar to week five assignment. Again, if you have any question, feel free to send an email. And thank you.